The Ledger, written by René Claveau. Fade in. Exterior. Sea to Sky Motel. Night. A rundown motel on the outskirts of New Orleans. No cars in the parking lot. Strong winds rip violently at the palm trees. A neon vacancy sign reads, No Vacancy. The no flickers off and on rapidly, and then, vacancy winks out, leaving just the word, no. Interior, sea to sky motel lobby, continuous. The motel lobby with a couple of upholstery chairs by the door. The bad 70s decor seems right at home here, complete with an old cigarette machine next to a short hallway. A tacky, dimly lit chandelier hangs over the front counter where the manager, 50, tall, gaunt, charming, Stan staring at the door, drumming his fingertips. The door bursts open and lightning flashes, silhouetting a figure standing in the doorway. Father James, 28, rugged, dour, wearing dirty vestments with a decidedly off-white collar, drops his leather case inside and leans on the door to close it. He wearily carries the case to the desk. Manager. Hell of a day to be traveling. Father James grunts agreement. Just in from the hurricane or will you be staying on? Father James. Just the night. I see. In that case, could I trouble you with a delicate matter? It's been a long day. Actually, a long year. If you could just show me to my room. Well, this won't take but a minute. In exchange, please stay as my personal guest. No charge. The manager slides out from behind the counter, takes Father James by the arm, guides him back toward the door. I'd just like you to take a look, see if there's something you can do. The door opens again. Rain obscures the parking lot behind Ophelia, 56, black, creole, rotund, as she shuffles inside, carrying a knitted bag. Ophelia. Whew, that wind's got a right chill to it, straight to the bones. She sees the manager with Father James and stops short. Why don't that just figure? Should have stayed in a frying pan. I'll be right with you, ma'am. As soon as I take care of this gentleman. I'll save your please and thank yous. I know what you want, and you won't be getting it. The manager smiles uncomfortably at her and leads Father James out the open door, closing it after them. Oh, that's right. You can't have it. She chuckles and eases herself into one of the chairs. Exterior, Sea to Sky Motel, continuous. The manager leads Father James along the covered sidewalk. The wind whips the rain beneath the covering, soaking them. They stop in front of room six. Interior, Sea to Sky Motel, room six, continuous. A motel room in total disarray. Furniture strewn about haphazardly, clothing everywhere, and rotting food mixed in with it all. Father James covers his nose against the malodorous assault. Edward, seventy, frail, lanky, sits cross-legged in the bed in soiled pajamas. He came to me two nights ago, about the same as you see him now. I was going to call the police, but with the hurricane... I'm not a doctor. Well, of course not, but you'll be able to tell me if he's in need one. Father James scoffs. <laughs> Clearly, he is. Edward giggles and kicks his feet over the edge of the bed. What do you want me to do? Well, only your job. Tell me if he's truly possessed. Father James gives the manager a hard look. You knew I'm an exorcist. Edward giggles again. The manager bows slightly. I'll leave it to you. As soon as he exits, a bureau slides across the floor and crashes against the door, blocking it. Father James considers the bureau for a moment. What's your name? Edward. We have many, for we are legion. Father James pulls a heavy silver crucifix from around his neck. He slowly winds the strong chain around his fingers. I'll play games all you like. It just tells me you're scared. He steps to the bed and holds the crucifix in front of Edward's face. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No Latin. I cast you out, demon. Release this soul in the name of Jesus Christ. Edward leans forward and presses his forehead against the crucifix. It burns his skin, but he laughs. Father James takes hold of the man's hand firmly. I am speaking to the man inside this foul creature. I know you can hear me. He shakes his sleeve, still holding Edward's hand. A rosary slides out from the sleeve and falls over Edward's wrist. 
Edward howls in pain and tries to break Father James' grasp. Help me rid you of this demon. Say the Lord's Prayer. Edward stops howling and smiles wickedly. My father, who is in hell, damned be his name, his kingdom shall come. Father James lets the hand go as though burned. Fear clouds his face. Edward strokes his own cheek softly. You can't save this one. Well, you're the third so-called Antichrist I've faced this year. But the first to make you doubt. Edward jumps on the bed gleefully. You aren't strong enough, points at Father James. Not faithful enough. Father James picks up a kitchen knife from the floor. This hurricane's a sign, is it? A little monkey has a brain, eyes the knife. What are you going to do with that, Father? You're right. I can't save you. Father James jumps into the bed and buries the knife in Edward's chest. Edward collapses, a look of shock on his face. Father James steps away, hands sprayed with blood. But I can delay you. He wipes his hands on his vestments, grabs hold of the dresser to move it. Thou shalt not kill. Interior. See to Sky Motel Lobby, continuous. The manager looks up from a leather-bound ledger to the door. Ophelia rocks in her chair. Well, that was a dirty, dirty trick. The manager takes a fountain pen and draws a quick line across the ledger page. The door opens again. Amelia, 36, rushes in, out of breath and soaked without a coat or umbrella. Behind her, Ophelia spots Father James walking across the parking lot. He smiles at her, eyes black as pitch. Amelia shuts the door, leans heavily against it. Ophelia shudders and makes arcane gestures toward her.